support being more stressed out than ever before. They can easily feel anxious trying to balance school, work, social life, and family, while also trying to figure out their life paths and directions. These young adults are going through tough and major transitions in their lives, so it is not a surprise that there are high rates of common mental health problems such as depression, anxiety, and stress among college students. According to the American Psychological Association, anxiety is the top presenting concern among college students at 41.6% of students, followed by depression at 36.4% of students. Our team name is based on two concepts that we felt were important in discussions around mental health. First, the idea of the butterfly effect, which is that a small difference in the state of a system can make it a significant difference at a later time. Second, the phrase, a butterfly can't see how beautiful its wings are. A group of butterflies is called a kaleidoscope, so we felt like as a group discussing determinants regarding mental health, this would be a fitting name. My name is Demi Wang. I am a sophomore majoring in biology and global health. I am especially intrigued by the infectious diseases and mental disorders topics of global health and I was really excited when our group had agreed upon mental health as our topic of our Determinant Detectives project. Um, I think I bring enthusiasm, creativity, and planning skills to the group. Hi, my name is Zoe Kutas and I'm a sophomore from New York City majoring in biology. I felt the strength that I brought to the team was organization, mostly of our ideas as we brainstormed and helping to condense those ideas into specific determinants that we could talk about in this video. Hi, my name is Kenzie Huggins and I am a sophomore planning to major in biology on a pre-med track with a minor in Spanish. I am also an athlete on the track and field team here at Duke. I feel as though Global Health 101 will broaden my thoughts on health and be useful in the future in the medical field. Because I am a pre-med student athlete and a minority, I feel as though I can bring a different perspective to the group coupled with my flexibility, diligence, and range of experiences. Hi, my name is Emily Sanford and I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm a first year evolutionary anthropology and global health major. As someone majoring in global health, I'm excited to learn more about health related issues, specifically those that impact the local Durham community. I believe that I bring organization, passion, and creativity to this project. Hi, my name is Sydney Aquilina and I'm a senior majoring in philosophy and minoring in global health and chemistry. Some general strengths I bring to the group are creativity and critical thinking, but for this project in particular, the epidemiological research I have done on adverse childhood experiences is also a key strength because it has given me hands-on experience in thinking more deeply about health determinants and specifically those related to mental health. We chose the topic mental health because this past week was Suicide Prevention Week. We wanted to highlight the prevalence of mental health outcomes, stress, anxiety, and depression, specifically because of this new format of college life. Most notable to us were the two unfortunate suicides that happened last semester after the semester had moved completely to virtual learning. This made the topic very relevant to us as Duke students. Being that some of us in the group are not living on campus, we decided our location would be the campus of Duke University because we all miss Duke in pre-COVID campus life. Duke is also a location that is very familiar to each one of us, allowing us to bring personal experiences into the discussion and explain its relation to determinants of health. Going to an academically rigorous school, there is a pressure to keep up and do well academically as well as socially. Having to manage sleep and hygiene while balancing heavy academic responsibilities and a social life can cause a lot of stress and anxiety. The struggle to fit in socially or the pressure to find a solid friend group can also be a major intermediary determinant. Imposter syndrome or feeling like you don't belong, whether that be academically or socially, is common amongst college students and can be a huge psychosocial stressor. 55% of students nationally claim that their biggest stressor to be academic in nature. Overworking and constant screen time often lead to behavioral and biological intermediary determinants such as lack of sleep and lack of exercise, which have negative impacts on mental health. Stress is the number one reported impediment to academic performance. It's easy to fall into a positive feedback loop of unhealthy mindsets and living habits that exacerbates the existing anxiety, stress, and later depression. College students all have different family backgrounds. Some may experience stressors from being away from their family or homesickness, and some may experience stressors from family conflicts, obligations, and expectations. Either way, many college students' mental health are influenced negatively by this psychosocial intermediary determinant. Students have to to worry about their family matters while having additional psychosocial stressors that add to their existing stress and anxiety of doing well academically. Structural determinants such as social economic factors also play a large role in the mental health of college students. Insufficient income and financial hardship are associated with anxiety. Students who have to worry about doing well academically as well as support themselves financially, either that 
either through long hours of work outside of school or applying to scholarships or finding other ways to pay for their tuition have that additional stressor in their lives. The structural determinants that when not speaking about global health would probably be called identifiers like gender, socioeconomic status, race and ethnicity, religion, sexuality, all of these can affect mental health outcomes. Um, these aspects of people's identities can be used to build community, as exemplified in the many clubs and institutions on Duke's campus that bring people who identify in similar ways together, which would improve mental health outcomes as students have support systems around them. But Duke is not immune to the inequalities and prejudices of the world, and so many students experience racism, sexism, homophobia, and other ways in which aspects of their identities aren't accepted or respected, leading students to feel alienated or unwelcome, which would lead to negative mental health outcomes like poor self-image or depression if people feel excluded, judged, or not represented on Duke's campus. Being on a college campus amidst a pandemic puts many disease determinants into play. Some of these were always present, but because circumstances have changed due to the virus, these determinants have a stronger and more notable effect than in the past under normal circumstances. Most schools aren't coming back to campus, but Duke did allow its freshmen and sophomores to come back to campus. Because people were affected financially by the virus, their income and socioeconomic status might have had a role in them being able to come back to campus or not. Their mental health could be strongly affected by their living situation. For example, being forced to stay at home may not have been a suitable living condition for their mental health while in college. College. Upon move-in week, large groups of students arrive, yet are forced to live in a relatively small space with a consistent risk of getting COVID. The relatively small space or even relatively large space without social support from a roommate represent intermediary determinants because of material circumstances and the psychosocial factor of lack of social support. Similarly, the increased anxiety of possible exposure to COVID is an intermediary psychosocial factor because of persistent stressful living conditions. Students, of course, have the option to stay in their rooms for the majority of their time to evade concerns of contracting COVID. However, this perpetual isolation is also concerning in respect to mental health. In this time of social isolation, whether that's through quarantine or social distancing, there's no doubt that mental health has taken a toll from this decrease in regular interpersonal interaction. The uncertainty of our situation and overwhelming pessimism on the news and social media only acts to heighten these issues. Especially for students at Duke who are located in a more sparse an isolated learning environment on campus. This risk for mental health issues such as anxiety and depression is worsened. These living and working conditions act as an intermediary determinant and have a more proximal effect on mental health outcomes such as stress, anxiety, and depression on Duke's campus. Besides causing distress and discomfort to those who experience these outcomes, they may also have ne negative impacts on a student's performance in school and physical health by possibly raising blood pressure or risk of heart disease or obesity. Being separated from family and friends may also have an impact on the mental well-being in Duke students as that valuable support network is no longer as accessible as it would be typically. And especially at Duke, social stigma serves as a major psychosocial intermediary determinant for depression and anxiety. This is perpetuated by a culture of effortless perfection where students at Duke are discouraged against getting help or even discussing their mental health with their peers because they don't want to seem incapable or feel like a failure per Duke standards. Unfortunately, the safety measures of social distancing, mask wearing, and virtual communication, which are essential during this time, make matters worse. People psychosocially aren't used to reaching out and being vulnerable in these circumstances. At the same time, since these topics aren't normalized, some students feel they wouldn't be taken seriously or fear how others will perceive them, particularly given the diversity of backgrounds and past experiences among Duke students. This problem is amplified in this time of the pandemic due to comparative grief, where students feel their struggles and suffering aren't valid because they know there are others who have it worse. While most of the determinants discussed in this presentation lead to negative mental health outcomes, there are intermediary determinants on Duke's campus that could improve mental health outcomes or lead to positive ones. These are the availability of resources for students like CAPS, the Women's Center, the Wellness Center, Student Health, um, Peer for You, Blue Devils Care. This is just scratching the surface of the resources available to Duke students to help improve mental health. Thank you.